Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today I'm going to review a couple of models of generic fountain pens supplied by Lee Valley Tools. But more importantly, I'm going to showcase the pen turning skills of my friend and local pen turning artisan, Michelle Paquette. Michelle and his lovely wife Lori have been friends with Wynn and me for 33 years. I only recently discovered that Michelle turns custom pens in his workshop. He recently gifted me this handmade fountain pen made from 5400 year old ancient bog oak. It is exquisite and you'll see it closer in a moment. Would you care to sign our guest book? Why, thank you. When he gave me this handmade pen, I immediately commissioned him for three more. Four more, in fact, including these three fountain pens and a mechanical pencil for Win, which Michelle will turn from this ivory-like block of acrylic. We're going to take a look at each of these writing instruments, as well as visit Michelle in his workshop as he does the finishing and the assembly on this pen right now. <music> So Michelle not only gifted me this ancient oak fountain pen, he made a couple of pens for my pen mentor Ron. This one in a lovely jade type green and a larger pen in a burled oak. Uh, this model is called the Cambridge. And this one is a Baron as well. As this one. First I want to talk about the generic base hardware of these pens from Lee Valley. There are two models I'm going to examine today. The Baron, this one, and the El Grande, this one. So I'm going to review the pen hardware separate from the finishing materials that are custom made by Michel and we'll look at some of his processes. What I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of these two Lee Valley fountain pen models show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a couple of writing samples. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about these Lee Valley fountain pens. Let's look at this Baron model. It is for sale on the Lee Valley web store in chrome, gold plate, sterling silver, or titanium gold for $1750, $1850, $2550, and 3250 Canadian, respectively. All of these generic fountain pen, ballpoint, rollerball, and mechanical pencil kits from Lee Valley are a combination of brass and plastic. The silver and titanium references are to plating, and I suspect strongly all of these kits are made in China. This is Janice Butterworth's Baron model right here. She provided the acrylic blank for this which is called Camo Carnival. This and the other blanks in Tiger's Eye, Blue Abyss, and Ancient Oak are all from a pen blank supplier from Guelph, Ontario, Canada called William Woodwright, which has the web address of penblanks.ca. They have an incredible variety of blanks in wood and acrylic. Lee Valley also has a limited variety of wood and acrylic blanks online and in their stores. Wynn selected this acrylic blank for the pencil Michelle is making her as soon as the hardware arrives. Here is the pencil she ordered. This Baron model fountain pen in the clown car colors is the one we will see Michelle doing a final finishing and polishing and assembly on later. Michelle was kind enough to invite me into his workshop to see the final processes in a socially distanced fashion, of course. Let's take a look at that video right now. Okay, this is my friend, Michel Paquette. He is a pen turner extraordinaire and a friend for many, many, many years. And thank you for doing this, Michelle. It's great. He's got a couple of pens already done for me. And this is the third. These are the El Grandes. I like the larger section and the larger nib on the El Grandes. Yeah, again, it's driven by the, what's called the bushing, the mm -hmm. seat. And then this one is, on the on the lathe, is a uh, Baron. 
It's a barren fountain pen. And uh, that one was selected by Janice. And it's it's acrylic. Camel Carnival. Camel Carnival. Ca camel. This is like camel. A, camouflage. Camouflage. This, this is a this is a camel camouflage. And then it gets on the lathe. And then, then it gets on the lathe. Now, now your lathe, is, is this what they call a mini lathe? Yeah, this is a mini lathe. So because of the, uh, the size here. Yeah, and you can get these at Lee Valley as well? Yeah, Lee Valley, PMS Tools. So once it's got the blank, it's square, obviously. Yeah. So I use the, the gouging tool. I've got two of them. Is a, a standard gouge. Mm -hmm. Then this is a, a carbide carbide tip square. Yeah. I prefer using this one. The those acrylics they're they're really hard. Mm -hmm. As opposed to a wood a wooden so it's like like soft softer. Yeah. Yeah. So the, um, even hard wood is is softer than uh, correct. Even hard wood is softer than acrylic. Than so what I do is I use this carbide tip, and this is the setup. So I'm, I've done already, but you just go in and you look at it on YouTube. There's all kinds of video about turning, bringing mm -hmm. the square back to a round form, fitting the bushings here at pretty high speed. So as you do this, the tip to the, the blank, yeah. and then you shape it to the way you want. So where I was going is that first I sanded with all of those, so that's 150 grit to 600 grit, right. each each side, and now I'm up to the uh, what's called the wet polishing. So this box here takes me to 600 grit. Mm -hmm. All those little square pads here will take me from uh, 1500 to uh, 12,000 12, microns or whatever that is. Yeah. Fountain pen people know those. Those are micromat grades. That's right. Up to 12,000. That's the final polishing. Right. So that's why you wear an apron because it splashes all over yeah, you. Exactly. So you see, I, I, I polished it with the Ultra Shine already. Mm -hmm. So it looks good, but it's dull. You'll see coming up really with the, uh, the pad, the, 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 the mesh here. Usually for acrylics, you want to turn at a higher speed because otherwise it chips or it cracks. Or right. it's, the acrylic can be quite brittle at times. So if you get a steady speed and you just keep uh, turning at the same speed. That's the 12,000. That's 12,000. See already, see, see it shine. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long did it take you to turn it from a block into that shape? Uh, the, from the square block, yeah. it was about an, an hour. Mm -hmm. But between the cutting and the uh, drilling, you can see two hours mm -hmm. and then you can say usually they, they say you sand as long as you turn it so you an hour of turning and an hour of sanding from the yep. lower grit and this one was about a few minutes but uh, yeah that's just the polishing part uh, you, right. at this point yes the, that one you really take the imperfection out of so now we're going to apply this polish this is just again to fill any kind of imperfection left Right. on it and it's a it prepare the uh, the blank for the last polish here 
And you learned all this on YouTube? Uh, or you've been YouTube doing it for years? And <laughs> I went to, I did quite a few of Lee Valley's uh, oh, the classes. classes yeah. Cool. Yeah. So how long have you been doing this? I started this in 2017 when I bought uh -huh. this. But my first pen turning at Lee Valley was, I think, in the fall of 2016. I think I've got, I think I've got one of those in my possession as it belonged to Ron. You gave one to Ron. Uh, correct. That yeah. was a, a Cambridge that, yes, that Cambridge. I did from Lee Valley. Right. And you really noticed that the, the colors coming out not when you turn, but when you stop. Yeah. Really rich. <laughs> Look at that. Now it's really shining. Yeah, now it's really shiny. Now it's up to the uh, the ultra gloss. And that's what the, the, the last finishing. Oh. It's just straight just polish. Straight polish. polish. Friction polish, you call it. So. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Wow. Very rich. This is my my pen press. Yes. I'm going to press the component in each of the component barrel, the cap. Sometimes there's glue in there. I use uh, the CA, yep. pretty um, high strung uh, yep. uh, glue here. And uh, yeah, that one, uh, literally it's old military style in uh, World War II. They would use this to pinch uh, injuries. It was actually invented for that, or yeah. discovered for that, for yeah. uh, yeah. for a field suture. That's right. Yes. You glue the stick in yeah. together. It still works. It that does. Way. Yeah, it does. So yeah, you want to sand the inside to make sure that uh, oh, any coarse pieces are sanded away. Beautiful. Ta-da, Stephanie. Stephanie. Thank you, Michelle. You're very welcome. Expert craftsperson. <laughs> and we'll have more business coming your way. <laughs> yeah. This is what I call galaxy. It's yeah. called a blue abyss. Yeah. But I mean, that's incredible. Now, when it was in a blank, it was actually shiny. This blank was shiny, and uh, that probably that uh, pearlescent stuff that yeah. you see there. Yeah. But uh, this one, this is the amber. Yeah. And this one was dull, 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 and you sort of saw yeah. that it had this ability, yeah. but none of this chatoyance That's you the, can see. The leftover. Here's the leftover piece. Yeah. So you can see yeah. the difference between what the blank is. Yeah. And you almost have to look inside that blank to see it's going to be this. I really thought that this one would be spectacular. Yeah. This is the first time I'm looking at it closely. Look at that. Yeah. That's outstanding, Michelle. <laughs> so three gorgeous pens by Michelle Paquette. Thank you so much, sir. This is fascinating. Now let's look at the pen. This Baron model isn't that large of a pen capped. Here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan 
and you can see that the Metropolitan is just slightly longer than the Baron. From the top, the Baron has a chrome finial that's slightly tapered with a black plastic, slightly pointed uh, dome on it. The chrome finial attaches a chrome clip with an interesting tapered shape to it. Very pleasant. And it is sturdy and very springy and very usable. The cap tapers up and then down slightly to two chrome bands separated by a black plastic ring. Then the barrel tapers up slightly and then back down slightly to two chrome bands in a stepped pattern and then some plastic threads and a tapered end blind cap. These threads here facilitate the ability to screw on post uh, the cap. And this end cap unscrews to give you access to the converter inside. The cap unscrews with one turn to reveal an extremely narrow and long tapering slippery chrome metal section and a number five size gold plated steel nib. The step down from the barrel to the section is quite large, but this isn't sharp at all. The threads have a little bit of bite to them. And then the section tapers down to a small ring at the end of the section. And then we see the gold plated nib. We see it has no name and just Iridium Point Germany, which we all know as the hallmark of a generic nib made in China. And here is the plastic feed. The nib and feed are friction fit in there and can be pulled and swapped if necessary. But I suspect a, I haven't tried it yet, but I suspect a stock number five nib would swap fairly easily. The metal ring of the section can be unscrewed. And you see a nib and feed unit that looks like it can be swappable with other nib and feed units if you get the right size. But with that extra little ring on there, it looks a bit proprietary. Of course, the section unscrews and there is a standard international converter supplied along with one standard international cartridge. There is no cap liner inside the cap, but in there you can see the plastic threads. The cap posts by screwing it onto the end of the end finial, which makes it very secure, but it also makes the pen extremely back weighted and way too long. Unposted, the pen is fairly balanced, but you have this very narrow, long, but very slippery metal section to deal with. This may work well for those with smaller hands. For me, here is my barren ancient oak posting the pen and then writing with my grip back here with my thumb on the barrel and my fingers cradling the section is a, a much better balance for me. The big difference between Janice's Baron and my Baron other than the obvious is that the oak finish is much lighter a pen than uh, this acrylic finish. Now let's turn our attention to the El Grande model. I selected this model for the two pens I asked Michelle to turn for me because of the more standard size section and a number six size nib. I felt that the nib that came with the pen was bad. I could easily swap to one of my better number six size steel nibs. The pen hardware kit for this is available in gold and chrome finishes for $14.90 and $15.90 Canadian, respectively. Alongside the Baron, this is a much larger pen. This is the Blue Abyss version, and as I suspected from the photos on the William Wood Wright website, it would turn out, pun intended, to be very similar to the Galaxy finish found on Pen BBS and Moonman. Here it is next to my Moonman Galaxy M800. They are very similar in size as well, 
with the moon man just being slightly longer but uh, that's where the similarity ends because in terms of weight this is much weightier than this pen because the moon man m800 is mostly acrylic where this pen is mostly brass from the top we see a shiny black plastic flat finial and then a gold colored metal ring which attaches to the wide gold colored clip even though it looks stout it actually functions very well and is nicely springy the cap tapers up slightly and then is straight to where it starts to taper down again towards a large gold band which has two rings either engraved or embossed into it and then a flat black plastic end to the cap which also turns out to be the cap threads on the inside the barrel then tapers up slightly and then is straight until about here where it tapers back down to another wide gold band with two rings engraved into it and a two-step tapered black end cap which is also a blind cap which can be unscrewed to access the converter inside the cap unscrews in one turn to reveal a black plastic concave section with a small ring lip on the end and a number six size gold colored steel nib the step down from the barrel to these threads is rather large but that edge isn't uh, sharp at all and those threads actually are not as sharp as the plastic ones on the Baron but for my grip my thumb sits on the barrel acrylic very smooth right here and my other fingers are cradled on that black plastic section which is neither slick or slippery and uh, actually feels very comfortable the nib is again like the Baron a generic Chinese steel nib with the ubiquitous iridium point Germany but in a nicely stylized pattern of a banner with those words on it and a bit of a sunburst of uh, radiating lines it might fool some people into thinking that this was a branded pen the inside of this cap shows again no cap liner but you can see those black plastic threads right there for the cap the section unscrews and again we see a standard international converter this pen also came with one standard international cartridge uh, and both of these pen kits the El Grande pen kits uh, arrived with both of those uh, cartridges had relieved themselves of their ink inside their little baggies the cap posts right up to that second step and it's very secure unfortunately it does back weight the pen significantly to the point that it makes it difficult to write with posted the pen is just long enough to write with unposted but it is fairly comfortable unposted but my solution again is when posted to shift my grip back slightly and hold my thumb on the barrel and my fingers supporting the section and it moves the center of gravity back to here so the pen still falls down towards the page which you want and I can write with it fairly comfortably uh, posted like that unposted I have to sh shift my grip a little bit further towards the page and my thumb actually starts resting on those threads but it's not uncomfortable but if you have to grip all the way down towards the the paper and the nib you might not want to post this pen now let's look at some size comparisons and here we have the Lee Valley El Grande with a Lee Valley Baron a Moonman M800 Galaxy a Pilot Metropolitan and a Lamy Safari now let's look at them posted and here they are posted as you can see the Moonman M800 and the Lamy Safari are the longest of the bunch posted now we'll look at some size comparisons and I'll be back with some writing samples
and we're back with the writing portion of the review or portions of the reviews. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and I'm going to write with my ancient oak baron instead of Janice's uh, baron because I linked mine. So this is the Lee Valley Baron and it is in ancient bog oak and it is a fine even though it isn't marked a steel nib and the ink on this pen is Monteverdi Scotch Brown and here is the swatch for the Scotch Brown along with some Mont Blanc Toffee Brown and some Ackerman SBRE Brown Brown ink 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 dink so let's check the wetness on this pen it's actually okay for wetness and as to line variation there's not very much at all that's no pressure that's a bit of pressure it's already railroading it's a very stiff steel nib with lots of feedback you can probably hear that uh, this line comparing to my Richard Binder line thickness chart is point five millimeters or point zero two inches which makes it a western fine or a japanese fine to medium and our writing sample And some reverse writing. Very scratchy. And some quick writing. He was struggling to keep up with just a little bit there. And this is the Lee Valley El Grande in Blue Abyss and it is also a fine steel nib and this ink is KWZ Azure number five. Let's check the wetness on this. It's also decently wet. And here's the swatch for KWZ Azure number five, along with some Visconti Blue and some Gerba Blue Ocean. Pardon my French. You don't frighten us! English pig dogs. And this nib in terms of line thickness, line variation is also very stiff. And this line is a bit thinner, a touch thinner. So it is more fine and it is more scratchy. You can probably hear that. So I would have to work on this nib or replace it. But it is, according to my Richard Binder chart, this line is uh, 0.4 millimeters in width or uh, 0.16 inches, which makes it a Western XF or a Japanese 
uh, fine. And our quote There's nothing nature couldn't teach about the rising of the wrist. A lovely little thing about the bugger when he's pissed. And some reverse writing. No, it's not possible. This nib feels very much out of alignment. And some quick writing. As you can see, it's having some issues making a line. I'm not sure that's the feed. I got a feeling it's the nib uh, needs some adjusting. So what do I like and what do I not like about these fountain pens? Well, these two pens are very different in style, but they have one thing in common. They are both kit pens. They are substantial in their materials, but very generic. They are relatively inexpensive for just the hardware. The blanks are relatively inexpensive as well, most being around five or six bucks. Where these pens shine is in the custom handmade hand-finished quality of the pen's finish material. That these pens were hand-turned and finished by Michelle makes them one-of-a-kind treasures. Judging the pens based on the Lee Valley kit alone as fountain pens, they aren't actually as bad as I expected from a kit pen. The pens write okay. Uh, the balance is a bit wonky with them. Uh, the section on the Baron is way too narrow and slippery. The one model suits my hand a little bit better uh, than the other, but I can write with both pens with no problem. I've had fountain pens with brand names of enormous pedigree that don't write any better than these. Add to that, you can swap out either of these nibs, um, either with uh, generic number five or number six nibs with relative ease, and you have a good reliable fountain pen with plenty of curb appeal. The trick is to have a Michel Paquette. You can get all these parts for relatively few dollars, but where can you find your Michel Paquette? I was curious and looked up pens like these that are finished by other pen turners. Kit pens with hand-turned exotic acrylics or wood finishes. There are a number of shops on Etsy where you can get very similar kit pens with hand-turned materials. Here are a few. Check out the selling prices here. You're paying for the skill of the artisan and for the one-of-a-kind work of art. Of course, you can always tool up at Lee Valley with your own mini lathe and shop tools and take all of the classes that Michelle took to learn how to turn pens and make these yourself. Et voilà. For me, I'm just thrilled to have Michelle as a friend. And I'm also grateful for his generosity and allowing me to film his process for all of you to see and enjoy. Thank you, Michelle, for the pens, the friendship, and for sharing your shop and your expertise with my viewers. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.